This is Gary Sermon from A&M EDM in Birmingham, and he's about to turn the mini racing world on its head. Gary, what's the project? The project is an A plus five uh, Billy uh, aluminium engine block, uh, predominantly aimed at the mini series, but with the inline crankshaft, can go in any single seater wheel, wheel drive car. Tell me your journey. What have you been on from start to where you are now? The initial part of the project was to sort of laser scan and CMM all the various parts of, of a, an historical mini engine, bring them all together, reverse engineer, and then set out. Uh, how we're going to design a new block uh, based on five main bearings, um, strengthening up the main bearing caps, uh, uh, curing the ceiling of the cylinder head and multiple other uh, issues with the original design. As a child, uh, I say child, when I was 12 I built my first mini engine uh, and, and obviously we, we messed with motorbikes. And I also had a, a vision of actually building a, a five main bearing block um, okay, I went into engineering, uh, I'm in my early 50s now, uh, and Covid gave us the time to actually sit down and, and basically design what you see now. Tell us about the process of designing what we see, because you've got quite a jazzy computer here. Uh, the size of the files and the data are, are enormous, I mean that's a two terabyte database. Um, so you, you need firepower to actually be able to generate it or re revolve. Machines would just generally lock up with that because the data is, is, is enormous. So again, once we've got all the scan data in, um, you reverse engineer back to original, but then what you have to do then is uh, basically from the floor model so that you can fit in the five main bearing crank, uh, look at the uh, offset of the bores, retrofit the BMW head-on, so uh, there's a lot of compromise with, with these engines, which the mini engine was, uh, as somebody told me, a big bowl of compromise anyway. Most of the parts are machined on Hercos. a and EDM have a facility that houses over 20 Herco machines, all three axis and five axis, from their smallest to some of the largest they produce. So Gary has all the tools he needs for the job. Um, a project like this, basically, you've got to have a vision. Because if you had a vision, you, you, you've got nothing. So you need to sort of focus what you're trying to achieve and then work with the tools you've got around you. Uh, fortunately for us, we've got a multiple Hercos outside, five axis, three axis, fourth axis, uh, CNC turning suite. So, so we've got all the firepower to manufacture anything. What that lets me do as well is because I can design in view of manufacture where sometimes people design something, it goes out to be manufactured and it can't be built or machined. So then it has to come back to the drawing board, which delays the project. David, what were your first thoughts when Gary said he's got this amazing project on his hands? Um, I was very excited, to be honest. I, I, we've known Gary for years and the kind of parts and work he's done on our machine. I had every confidence he'd know what he was doing. Um, what's exciting about a job on an engine block like this is Gary, Gary's understanding of how to make it. So most people who design an engine would sort of design it, put it up on a drawing board and then go, no idea how you're going to make that. Gary's, Gary's designed it with manufacturer in mind, but also manufacturer on, on a Herco in mind as well. And it's, it's particularly good that the whole block fits perfectly on this 42U. Can you explain some of the features that the machine have that work so well for some of the operations? Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, these are, these are automotive components and there are a variety of materials. And some of the machining is really quite high accuracy, fine tolerance work. Um, if you know anything about the Herco machines, we tend to build a slightly more solid, robust machine 
than, than what you generally buy on the market. So they're powerful high torque spindles, um, generally quite fast motion, good software for 3D machining. And it's, it's the combination of everything that allows you to cut you know, heavily through tall steels and things like that. Um, but also at the same time, maintain good fine accuracies. For a job like this, you're, you're moving bores around and you have to recenter very finely and accurately. And, and the size of bearings, the supports we have, the way we design our rails gives us an advantage over, over most suppliers. In my words, Gary is nothing short of a genius. Off camera, this man passionately talks to us about the minor improvements to this long established engine that will make major changes to its performance in the future. No, I, I think creat creativity is a gift. It's not something we're taught. It's, I find generally if I have a problem, I go to sleep and I let my subconscious mind work on it. And then you wake up in the middle, it could be two o'clock in the morning, and off you go. And I, and I do find when I'm overtired, you're more creative, bizarre as it sounds. This was a mammoth task for Gary with sleepless nights at times. However, one thing he couldn't control was the pandemic, where he took a turn for the worse. There's been a lot of stresses along the way. Uh, one of them actually catching COVID uh, prior to sort of uh, testing the engine, which has delayed us slightly, but uh, we're back on track now. And by catching COVID, it did also give you a bit of a rest though, didn't it? It did, although when I was in hospital, I was still posting early hours of the morning, which uh, obviously the wife was not, not too happy with, but uh, <laughs> sometimes you can't stop. <laughs> After recovering from having COVID and never letting it stop him in his tracks, a couple of months went by and I wanted to find out the latest. So one of the first improvements that you needed to do was change the material. Why was this? The original mini block was uh, produced from cast iron. Uh, they're no longer available. So we, we looked at uh, aluminium as an alternative choice due to uh, it being, its availability and its method to get rid of heat away from the engine. And have you had any problems that you've had to overcome with this or is it just machined beautifully? Uh, none really, it's been pre pretty straightforward. Uh, obviously you have to look at the clearances are different from cast iron to steel. Uh, with all the reverse engineering we did and we're using shells and mains from the vehicles only available, so that to a certain extent has been taken care of. So the next challenge was to go from three main bearings to five main bearings on the crankshaft. That's correct. Uh, the original classic Mini runs on three main bearings uh, and was designed obviously to take relatively low horsepower, although the uh, race cars are hitting 180 plus horsepower now. Wow. So we designed and developed our five main bearing crankshaft which again can uh, rev at a higher RPM and can take more load. And what have you had to overcome here then as part of the design? Again, you've got to shoehorn uh, the extra two main bearings into the original block uh, space. The original uh, mini engine block had three main bearings. There's one, two, three. To put the extra two main bearings in to make five, you add this column and this column, which supports the crankshaft Perfectly. Now talk me through the end caps then. Obviously when you introduce a five main bearing crank to the block you need to secure the crank with end caps. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Now with the increased load and RPM what we've done is we've now used dowel rings which are pretty standard. We've used what we call anti-walk keys now which track the end of the end caps to stop them walking. When these are fitted onto here now, they're located on the dowel rings, the anti-walk keys, and they use four studs, so it's bulletproof. Does that add more weight? It does add more weight, uh, hence the aluminium. Obviously, it, the original block is, I think it's 32 kilogram, and this particular block, with uh, all, the, all the main end caps uh, fitted on, is 20.55 kilogram. So you're kind of having to compensate for every change you make, You've yeah. got to make changes in other areas. Yes, you rob Peter to pay Paul. 
So next up, how have you approached the sealing of the cylinder head? There's several methods for that. Uh, the block over here has been machined and it's called open deck. We have to do that based because it's uh, from a billet and not a casting. And then what we do, we then offer a block guard which is tapped into position and laser welded to create the sealing. Another method of sealing is to use a uh, wire ring which localises the pressure around the aluminium, around the copper gasket, sealing the combustion. So we've seen and heard a lot of the manufacturing processes and all of the improvements that you've really had to make as part of your brief, but you're at the assembly stage now, so how's that going? Uh, okay, um, obviously it, it's a first one, it's a prototype, so as we build, if there's any issues we need to tweak, so far we've been relatively lucky, we've had one hole out. Um, again, once it's all fully put together, which we're hoping to do in the next week, week and a half, the engine's going away to be tested on a dyno in the normal aspirated uh, format. And so what are your goals for this project? We originally set the job, the project up. We, we fought with sell five or ten blocks a year. Obviously we've got quite a global following now. So if, if we sort of get, I don't know, 15, 20 a year globally, we'll be quite happy. Uh, again, with the inline engine, it allows you to put in any single seat race car. So, you know, let's hope the future is bright and see where we go with it. And in terms of the whole process, this has been 12 months out of your life, 12 months plus actually. It has. <laughs> it has, and you've had sleepless nights over this project. Would you do it again? Yes, I would. It's a passion. <laughs> Gary, we are lucky enough to meet machinists, engineers up and down the country, in fact, across the globe. You're a true engineer in my eyes. Um, I do keep calling you a genius, but you, you've made this happen. What's been your proudest moment? Seeing it in reality. I say it came from a, a vision in your mind, which obviously you have to then put to CAD. Then obviously through the machining stages, using Herco, multiple machines, and we're there now. It's our first offering. I mean, who gets to who gets to design and build an engine nowadays? But do you think many people could do what you've done? Uh, it's a, it's applying yourself. You know, if, if you've got that vision, that dream, it's about applying yourself and making it happen. And you certainly have done exactly that. So beyond testing and everything, and I've already asked you, you um, beforehand, but. Your goals, when you've sold this and it's out there, who's going to be in touch with you? Are people going to be in contact with yourselves or press or what, what hopefully is going to be the end goal? Um, again, we'd like to start selling. You know, it's like if you get enough people involved, you could get another race series, but they were designed for the road. And where are all the OEMs now haven't had to stop producing combustion engines, we can still manufacture them because we're, we're, we're small fry, basically. Of course. Uh, and again, if we can get them onto, into track cars, all the better. Well, we feel very privileged to be talking to you, to be covering the story, really, and maybe we're one of the first on this. So, fingers crossed, all the testing and everything goes okay. And I know Gary has will not stop there. You're going to keep going, improving, and constantly making improvements to this and other engines beyond there. Yes, agree. It's, it's like any anything. As soon as you finish designing it, you've got a better idea in your mind. And once these take off, we'll go to the next level, the next stage. You've been fortunate today, I've showed you some future designs. Yeah. The, if, if these go to market, the rest will follow. The world is your oyster. Thank you so much for watching this week's Swarf and Chips. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning. I know Gary will.